Hi, this is Mike Larson from Money and Markets TV. The stock market keeps humming right along, but as much as I'd like to say otherwise, the economic fundamentals just don't justify this rally. In fact, they're still deteriorating. Let's consider the housing numbers we've gotten in just the past week. The Census Bureau reported that new home sales fell unexpectedly in February. Economists were also looking for an increase in pending home sales, but they were disappointed on that front too. And the Case-Shiller Index of home prices dropped for a fifth straight month to its lowest level in almost a decade. Now most investors are, frankly, ignoring these numbers, instead focusing on the fact that the housing data is still a little bit better than it was a few months ago. But I think that's just due to the unusually warm weather bringing the traditional spring selling season forward by a couple of months. In other words, if you still own home builders or other housing-related stocks, it's time to sell. As for the broad market, the major averages are wrapping up their strongest first quarter since 1998. I keep searching for signs of the great global economic growth miracle that would justify these massive gains in equities, but they don't exist, and in fact, things are getting worse. The British economy contracted by three-tenths of a percent in the fourth quarter of 2011, a bigger decline than expected. France's economy is virtually stagnant. Meanwhile, Spain's economy will likely shrink by 1.5% this year, and the country just said its budget deficit deepened from 6% to 8.5% of GDP. Now here in the U.S., things aren't much better. The Conference Board's Consumer Confidence Index declined this month, as did regional manufacturing indices for Dallas and Richmond. Plus, February durable goods orders rose just 2.2%, missing estimates after a 3.6% dive in January. So it's obvious that the recent rally isn't due to improvements in the real economy. And it's just as clear what is responsible for the gains. Massive money printing by global central banks. The Bank of England is pumping out hundreds of billions of pounds to buy assets. And the latest lousy data have renewed calls for even more printing. Meanwhile, the ECB showered European banks with a trillion euros in cheap loans. But rather than putting that money back into the real economy, the banks are just speculating in the asset markets. And here, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke keeps trying to justify his ongoing use of the printing press to support growth. Never mind that it's not actually doing anything but boosting asset prices on everything from stocks to bonds to commodities. Folks, we've seen that these speculative manias, fueled by cheap money, can persist for a while. But eventually, they always fail. And when they do, they do so spectacularly. Considering the narrowness of this rally, the anemic volume accompanying it, and the loss of key sectors like transportation, utilities, and energy, I think that day of reckoning may be approaching. There are a few select stocks and assets that can hold up in this environment and after the Fed spending spree is over. But for the most part, I'd recommend taking gains off the table and preparing for the inevitable end of the easy money trade. I'm Mike Larson for Money and Markets TV. Thanks for watching.